Hey everybody, and welcome to Full Stack JavaScript. So I hope you guys are excited to learn some awesome things uh, and go through building real world examples using JavaScript because that's what we're about to set off to do. So the format of this course is going to be a little bit different than courses that I have hosted in the past. And the main reason is because, uh, well, I, I guess there's a few reasons. So one of them would be you learn best by doing. And a lot of times there, there is no bridge between the gap of, I know the syntax of the language, but I don't know how to do real world things with it. And so where you learn best by doing, I figure that together we will go through some examples. Uh, it does get pretty in-depth uh, around halfway through the course. So we're going to be building three applications using JavaScript. The first one is going to be a calculator. And in that project, basically, we just go over the basics of what React is. And so we learn how to create React components and work within the React lifecycle as well. Now, after that, we move on to actually some, some of the full stack aspects of JavaScript, where we create a REST API and uh, host it. And then we kind of bring it back to React as well, so we can get a good example of how a React application and a REST API written in JavaScript can communicate with each other and how you can use those two things to build a feature-rich application, I guess. We'll build a blog with it. And then the third application introduces a newer technology. I say newer because it's not new, but it's, uh, it's newer. <laughs> than JavaScript itself and a lot of the other technologies that we're going to be using, uh, which is WebSockets. So traditionally, when you have a client-side application, for instance, a React application, that communicates with an API, it's kind of like a ping-pong request. You send a request and you get a response, and that's all there is to it. Uh, it's kind of like one for one. So with a WebSocket, you can actually keep clients connected on the server side and you can send data to the client whenever it's deemed necessary. And so to demonstrate that capability, we're going to be building a chat application where you can create a user account. Uh, you can search for other users and add them and then message back and forth with them. And so that's going to be pretty fun as well. So first off, what is JavaScript? To put it very simply, it's an interpreted programming language that runs on the client side. So when you write JavaScript on a website, the server that the website is hosted on has nothing to do with executing that JavaScript the JavaScript code is sent to the browser of the user and interpreted on their machine. So there's different JavaScript rendering engines used in, uh, for instance, Chrome and Internet Explorer and Microsoft Edge, uh, etc. So all browsers have a slightly different interpretation. It all generally works the same, though. But a lot of times, uh, to, to get some specific browser capabilities working in all browsers is not always possible. And uh, so we're not actually going to cover Internet Explorer at all in this course because nobody should be using Internet Explorer. Unless you have like work applications that were coded for Internet Explorer and they won't work for anything else. In that case, use it. But that's beyond the scope of this course. So JavaScript was uh, introduced in 1995. It's evolved quite a bit since its initial 
uh, I guess, release. It originally didn't have object-oriented capacities. There were some ways to fake it, but nowadays you can easily create classes and instantiate them with a constructor and all the good stuff. And we're going to be covering that as well. So that version of JavaScript is called ES6, ECMA script 6. And that is what we're going to be using in this course, which also offers uh, the, the capability to use arrow functions, which uh, the syntax of it is a lot cleaner, I find. And so I generally default to writing arrow functions rather than uh, regular functions for the most part. So to get the most out of this course, you're going to want to know how to use HTML, uh, a minimal amount of CSS, just so that we can make things not look absolutely horrendous, and a basic understanding of JavaScript. We are going to take what you do know, and we are going to extend it with real world applications, you're going to learn how to use React, React Redux, you're going to learn how to use Loopback.js, which is a, the REST API framework that we're going to use, which is built on top of Express. You're also going to learn how to install packages through the Node package manager. And Node is basically the environment that we can use to run server-side applications like React's hot load server, which is a way that we can run React in development. And when we make changes to files, it will automatically reload the page in our browser. So it makes development like extremely simple. And then we're also going to learn about WebSockets. So WebSockets, again, are a way that we can add bilinear communication uh, and the server can keep connections open indefinitely and send messages to, um, to clients. You can keep a running list as well. Now, the package that we're going to be using for it is called socket.io. And this, uh, before I actually jumped into using WebSockets, this confused me because this sounds like some service, you know, software as a service offered by IBM or something like that, uh, because that's a domain extension, .io. Uh, but it's actually just a standalone library. I mean, not standalone, it does have dependencies, but you know what I mean? You install it to your computer. There's no third party uh, communication between any services or anything like that. This gives us everything we need to make WebSockets work out of the box. And uh, so, so it actually, when I say newer, it was released around 2010. And so, well, actually it was uh, in uh, December 2009, Chrome uh, enabled support for WebSockets. Uh, and I think it was fully... Uh, enabled in browsers uh, in 2010. So it's relatively new. It's still almost 10 years old, but when we talk about technologies like PHP and whatnot, it's, uh, it's relatively new. So with that being said, uh, again, you should know HTML, CSS, JavaScript. We're gonna take the knowledge that you have and we're going to turn it into applicable knowledge. And by the end of this course, you should be able to build uh, REST API programs, uh, create your own routes, your own callbacks and stuff like that. You should be able to build and work with React applications, uh, installing modules as needed or creating your own. And you will also be able to build a chat application or any other real-time communication system actually that uses WebSockets. The knowledge that we'll be going through in this course will be applicable to a wider range of specific uh, tasks that we perform here. Uh, so yeah, uh, the code for these projects will also be hosted on GitHub. I know a few of my older courses uh, did not have the code hosted for a few of the projects. And 
I think it's essential, kind of. Uh, I no longer have access to that old code, so unfortunately I can't get that content hosted. But what I can do is make sure that the projects that we build together in this course will be hosted on my GitHub page, which is github.com slash, and then my name, Nick Germain. And that's me. Uh, and so these are actually the libraries right here, uh, loopback tutorial, react tutorial, and the calculator project as well. And what I will do is uh, make sure that everything is accessible here that we go through so you guys can go look at the code and uh, kind of use it if you want to help you troubleshoot any issues you might have. Also feel free to uh, send me a message uh, if you're stuck at anything and you can't figure it out with GitHub and Stack Overflow doesn't seem to be helping, uh, definitely reach out and I'll do my best to help you with that. Um, so yeah, let's get into it and let's start working with React.